Should you be using AI assistance to help you with refactorings? Honestly, I think it depends. For small scale refactorings, I have a lot of success using AI assistance to speed things up. But where I'm seeing it's really struggling is when I ask it to do a large refactoring. Here's an example that I've been struggling with using an AI assistant to help me refactor the service class. This service class is quite large. It's 1400 lines of code, a bit more. And yeah, it's just grown in size quite a bit. It's doing a lot, so it's very hard to understand. I've wanted to refactor this for a while. So I have been trying to use cursor with Claude to help me break this down, maybe into different service classes, restructure it, and I've not had much success. So my experience has been, it tries to do way too much, breaking it into too many files, but then gets confused and doesn't really end up using those files or doesn't properly name things or update things in, pl in places that we need to update. So the code doesn't compile, it just becomes a broken mess that I have to sort through or try to work through the prompt to fix all its mistakes. But in the end, I don't get anywhere. It feels like I just go in circles trying to fix things, but not actually getting to a final state. Or it simply does a very minor refactoring, but still fails because it will move code into a new service and then not use that service in the place it took those methods out from. So I'm gonna showcase me trying to do it here. Let's see what kind of results we get. I have this service class that is doing a lot and is quite difficult to read. I like to refactor it to see what it can do in terms of refactoring, what it's gonna recommend, but where I've had success is where you get more specific. Like if you want to remove all the state into another service class, you would specify that. Or if you want to create a utility service class and move everything utility related, getting the duration, all those types of methods, then you can do that. If you want to reorganize this by putting all the functions alphabetically, and putting all the private functions at the bottom, it can do that okay. But I've tried that and even then it still kind of sucks. It will rename functions, but not update the calling of them in certain places. So I get compiler errors. Let's see what it's gonna do this time. It's gonna follow the single responsibility principle violation, handling too many concerns, project management, UI state management, form validation. So I, I have a feeling it's gonna go off. I've, create a lot of different services. So we can see here that the plan split this into smaller focused services, timer state service, timer entry service, project service, time entry validation, time entry state service, timer facade service. Gonna yeah, use all these services and extract the functionality. Okay, so I've never seen this before, but it gave me the recommendations, but it didn't go off and make the changes. That's a new one. Let's do it step by step. That's the crazy thing about AI. You can do the same thing multiple times and have a different experience with it. I think that will be one of the troubles of AI becoming perfect because you will need an operator who's able to work with it and be like, okay, we're going down a bad rabbit hole here. So let's scrap this, start over, readjust the prompt and see how we can go. But then when this is the process, you kind of question, does it make sense to go down this rabbit hole with it? Or should I just do the refactoring myself? At some point, it might take more hours to just be using this prompt than for me to go through this class and refactor it. But using the prompt is honestly kind of cool. It's just a new way of working because doing a manual refactoring, it's a lot more tedious on my part. And it still does take an enormous amount of time. To refactor this class would take probably days to look at it, 
get an idea of what I need to split up and actually do the splitting up of the code and updating it everywhere to call the new code. And then obviously all the testing, the new bugs I would introduce. So yeah, it's fun to attempt to use this and see what it can do. Okay. So let's do it step-by-step step. based on the search results. I can see the core timer functionality that we need to extract. Let's create a new timer state service. That will handle the timer specific logic. Oops. Creating this timer state service, which is going to have all our observables and then methods to trigger state changes. And now it's going to update timer service to use this. So it's removing things. It moves this code to a new file, but it doesn't remove the existing code and update it to call the new service that it added, but it, it seems to be doing that here. So that's good. Again, we're going step by step this time. So this is a completely different approach. So we can accept all those refactorings and let's see if it actually compiles. Okay. So it compiles. Great. Now let's summarize what we've done in the list, created a new timer state service that encapsulates all timer related functionality. Okay. So that's pretty good. We're at a pretty good start. What I'm going to do is just create a new branch now and commit as I go, <laughs> because we can get in a pretty messed up state. At least I can retain this change because this change looks quite decent. Which would you prefer to tackle next? Extract time entry CRUD operations into a separate service. Extract form, create a facade. So I'll choose this one. I can see it's creating a time entry service here and moving all the CRUD operations. It's using the service proxies, which are the method we use to call the endpoints. And now it's updating timer service to actually use that. So this is good. It's removing code. Because again, before it wasn't. Hmm. Okay. This looks fine. The one thing is it just does so many changes. And the downside of AI is you can literally just rush through the changes and hit accept all and not take time to understand really what it's doing. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. And that seems to be what a lot of people are doing, right? Is AI is letting us write and change code quicker, but then we don't even need to take the time to really understand that code. So that could be problematic because when we do need to understand the code, because AI can't solve the problem, our skill set in that might have atrophied a bit. So that's definitely one of the risks. I think of heavily relying on tools like this is that we are just letting it make all the changes and improvements itself. We're trusting its guidance that what it's doing is actually better as well. Created a new time entry service, moved all time entry state management to the new service, updated the timer service to use the new service and fix all type related issues, removed direct manipulation of entries. Is it compiling? It's not. So that is one of the things I always notice. It just likes to break the code. And now I have to figure out what is going on, right? It leaves the code in a state that's not compiling. It can be hard to understand everything that is done here. I can see that it didn't update our timer component. I timer component was using the service and it moved entries into this new time entry service. So I can simply fix this and access the component, but it becomes a process of trying to get it to fix it. It's like, okay, this is privately set, so it's not going to work, but it seems to understand that. So it's able to fix it itself. One of the issues is when it does a refactoring, it doesn't check every single file in your solution. I guess it makes sense because that would potentially be too much if you have a big code base. 
Elasticsearch through your code base to find where this service is used in this method and do the refactoring. So maybe this step-by-step -step approach makes more sense where you just get these compiler errors and you work through it. Still getting refactoring errors in timer list now. Okay. That one was easy. Okay. So now it's working. I was able to remove quite a bit of code from here and move that over into the time entry service. The thing is, I have no idea if any of this is actually working or if it's causing regressions. That's the other challenge with refactorings. You can refactor, but sometimes you will cause many regressions, introduce many new bugs. That could be a possibility here. I could be testing as I go, but I'm just going to test at the end to see what I end up with. And I'll see if I'll keep these changes. So here we'll commit all these. We kind of lost the context. Now it's going off to another file. So uh, you have to be explicit with this thing and careful. I meant in the timer service ongoing refactoring. Yeah, it's just a lot of refactoring. I reduced it by not that much. Like 60, 80 lines of code. At this point, I would keep going through the process of having it help me refactor step by step and hopefully get to something more understandable for this class. This process probably going to take hours <laughs> to actually do and then get everything working and testing. It's not just going to refactor in a few minutes and everything's going to be better. No, it's still a process of having it break things down, you having to monitor it, work with it to fix all the compiler errors. And then afterwards, you still have to do the testing and test if there's any regressions, bugs, and if there are, and you have to go and fix those using the AI assistant or manually. So it's a process. I think I'm going to continue an AI assistant to help me with refactorings like this. Cause it's a lot faster. Most of the stuff it did, I would come to the same conclusion of moving stuff into different services and splitting up the functionality. The reason this class is so hard to understand is because it's massive and doing many different things. We want to isolate the responsibilities into different services easier to understand. That's my experience using an AI assistant especially cursor for doing major refactorings.